Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Heroes Chronicles spin-off series for Heroes of Might and Magic 3. In Chapter 4, Tarnum must discover what had caused all of the good dragons to flee Avli, and then confront the Dragon Queen of Nyon. Alright, Scenario 6, Dragons of Gossamir Wings. Tarnum must acquire 12 fairy dragons in order to help him fight the Dungeon Overlords. All heroes will be limited to level 32, but Tarnum and his two best captains will transfer to the next scenario. I'm going to roll with 16 sharpshooters. Let's do this. The battle over the Arathian border taught Tarnum the true power of Mutare's dragon army. So searching for an equalizer, he set out to find the elusive and unpredictable fairy dragons. The Elf King has realised, as have I, that the Dragon Queen is growing in power too quickly. Even with Arathia on our side, how can we possibly stand up to the combined power of her dragons? So the Elf King has asked me to abandon the front line and try to enlist the help of the powerful but elusive fairy dragons. The Elf King has encountered these dragons before and despite their need for solitude, fairy dragons are very close to each other. Convincing even a small number of these creatures to join my forces might bring them all to my side. I hope he's right. Each day I spend away from the border allows Mutari to advance further into Avli and Arathia. Oh, Valita is still here. Nice. I figured she would have uh, no longer be here as a hero, but apparently not the case. While hunting, you spot a single black goose flying high above. Testing your skill with the bow, you draw back an arrow and release it skyward. Perfect. You bring down the goose, but it takes you some time to find the place where it fell. All you find, however, is a single black goose feather and the garniture of interference. You pick up the artifact, unable to shake the sense that someone is watching you. Ooh. <laughs> More resistance for my boy. Which is actually really good in this particular mission when we're against fairy dragons. <laughs> Love to see it. Now oh, that's a lot of uh, a lot of zealots. Bang, and the dirt was gone. <laughs> oh my! This might be a very um, potentially quick mission. <laughs> this is a very small map as well. Holy schmoly! Yeah, we don't have the uh, best of spells. We got no kind of AOE spells either, unfortunately, with Geneva. I say Geneva, Valita. I keep saying that because uh, she uses uh, Geneva's portrait. Man, a fireball here or a uh, um, ice ring would be so good. Alas. On the plus side, a nice easy fight. Flawless. I love to see it. She's got no spells either, okay. These are just very high level scouts. <laughs> Good to know. Wow, these places are actually pretty well built up. A pack of cavaliers stand guard over the Hellstorm helmet, stubbornly obeying their last order to protect the artifact with their lives. Do you wish to fight the foolish horseman for the helmet? Yeah, I don't think we need to lose anything here. Cheeky- wow! <laughs> oh my god. 35 attack and defense, man. Jesus! That makes this very easy. <laughs> oh Christ, sharpshooters. Plus Tarnum equals completely busted. <laughs> oh man, they should not be doing that much damage. Wow. Oof. Bodes well. Bodes very well for the rest of this campaign. The fact that we're that strong. Wow. 
does this take me? Underground, okay. Aspen has learned that there are six fairy dragon dwellings located somewhere to the south, but no one knows exactly where. Several of his scouts have disappeared attempting to find them. Unfortunately, Mutari's forces are in the area as well. Either she's attempting to gain control of the fairy dragons herself, or she's trying to stop me from recruiting them. Okay, that's good to know. Super convenient. Lots of battle dwarves step from the darkness of the gold mine ahead immediately taking your hand in theirs. We thank ye for ridding us of the Medusa Queens. They've been stealing our gold, many of us have died fighting them, their leader says. The dwarves are so grateful in fact that they offer to join your fight against Mutari, so they can ensure that this type of thing never happens again. Alright! I gladly accept. I can always already see the dwelling, the um, fairy dragon dwellings, I mean, just over yonder river. So we're looking for a red um, teleporter. Good to know. That's an expensive fight. Man, our attack and defense is <laughs> kind of crazy. Just got to prioritise what we bring back from the dead, is all. We do like no damage against my dragons. <laughs> Thanks for making that easy for me. 
Oh, one health, sure. Exactly the right amount. I'm real. You know what? I'm actually going to use a random hero. Scout. After a strategy session with my captains, Valita lagged behind till everyone else had left my tent. I poured some wine for us both, because I could tell she wanted to talk. I wanted to thank you, Tarnum, she said. Finally, she had learned to use my name. For what? Your words the other day, she said softly. I can't say I don't blame myself. Perhaps I could have held out longer, but I think you truly understand how I feel. More than you know, I said. Everybody makes mistakes, but it's how you deal with them, how you make up for them that counts. Yes, I think you're right, Felita said. We finished our wine without another word. Felita stood to leave, but she paused at the door. I've watched some of your chess games with Aspen, she said. He's been playing the game for hundreds of years. In fact, he's considered a genius at the game. And I'm sure he's the first to admit it, I said. We shared a laugh at that one. Yes, but I've noticed you're too aggressive. You're concentrating on beating your opponent when you should be thinking about beating yourself. How are you going to lose? Then she left, and I pondered her words for a long time. I mean, that's actually a very interesting strategy. How's my opponent going to beat me and then counter that play with your own? Could that be the turning point? Also, a barbarian aggressive at chess. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Okay, so we've got to look for Keymaster Tunts. My favourite type of minigame. <laughs> Let's go back to Rainhaven. Well, the only place we can go is down here to the monolith two ways, so... I challenged Aspen to a chess match last night, and I came closer to winning than ever before. I thought about Valita's words the entire time, but then my impatience got the better of me. I attacked when I thought I could win, and found Aspen ready for me. Checkmate, Aspen said, leaning back in his chair. That was some game, Tarnum. You almost had me there. Next time, I said, standing. I had to go thank Valita for her advice. So I'm getting the distinct impression that the relationship between Tarnum and Valita might kind of be going somewhere more romantic. I could be wrong, but I am kind of... Ooh, I found red. Interesting. Oh, there's their base. Wow, they don't have much at all. 
This uh, might be the end of Red, potentially. Let's see how this fight goes. Chain Lightning. And there goes 80% of their army. <laughs> My god. Spells, bruh. Wow, he's only a 3... A zero, zero, 3 2 Wow, they have absolutely zero chance. Rest the boys. Okay, is Red dead? Or have they got another base somewhere? Okay, no, they have got another base somewhere. Good to know. Oh, and there's Red. Okay, perfect. Oh, wow, there's their other base. Interesting. Well, okay then. Okay, this one's got Rust Dragons at the very least. Okay, this guy's a little bit stronger and he's got expert tactics. Okay, cool. Wow. <laughs> that always makes me laugh. Ooh. Resistance is futile. Alright. Definitely get both. Right, so that killed everything. Oh my god. Jesus H. <laughs> Damn. What a pizza cake. Okay, well red's dead and we've got both um key mass attempts around here. Lovely jovely. Instead of playing chess with Aspen again, I summoned Felita to my tent. I pointed to the board and said, Care for a game? Sure, she said, sitting. Later, when there were far fewer pieces on the board, she looked up from her most recent move and asked, What did you do, Tarnum? And what are you so ashamed about? I had promised to tell her, but could I really explain where I came from and why I, a human, was immortal? To put it simply, I killed many, many people. I believed I was right, and that anything I did was in the name of my goal, and was right as well. Innocence died? She asked hesitantly. More than I cared to think about, I said, including one of my own sisters. Your sister? How'd you live with yourself? I don't think Valita meant for her question to sound so harsh, but her words still bit deep into my soul. I have hoped that one day I can make things right again, I said. Felita sat in silence for some time, and then she stood and placed a comforting hand on my shoulder. I realised that not only do I understand her pain, but now there was someone who understood mine. It felt good, and I didn't want her to take that hand away. But she did. She dropped it slowly to her side, and left the tent without another word. I looked down at the chessboard. Only then did I notice that Valita had me in checkmate. Yeah, it's definitely romance brewing between these two. Faux show. Uh, we could probably accept that. We could probably do better, but to be honest, we've got such a big army now, it's just a case of uh, closing this mission out. Aspen entered camp this morning with a battered harpy held by a pair of his scouts. You wanted proof, Aspen said. Here it is. I looked at the harpy, then back to Aspen. The elf held up a rolled piece of parchment. We found this on the harpy. What does it say? I asked. I don't know yet. It's in some kind of odd code, but codes are like puzzles to me, and I'm the best at solving puzzles in all of Avli. Then Aspen turned to the harpy and slapped her hard across the face. Tell him what you told me, the elf demanded. The harpy said, I pick up the note is all I do, I fly in at night, pick up the note from the arrow in the top of the tree, and then take it back to my master. That's all I do, I carry things. And the arrow, what did it look like? An elven arrow with black and green feathers, the harpy said immediately. I clenched my fist because I immediately knew what those colours meant. Those were the colours Valita used on her arrows. I glared at the scouts and said, Take the harpy to my tent. I will interrogate her myself. Then to Aspen I said, Break the code. I want to know what's in the note. Oh no. So either Velita is the traitor. Or she could have been set up potentially. There's always that chance. Oh man, I bet Tana's going to be devastated. 
As you ride through the dark woods, you realise that no one has explored this land in centuries. Even the animals don't fear predators. For example, several deer step from the tree line and approach. They're close enough that you can see their sparkling yellow eyes. Too late, you realise these aren't deer after all. They magically transform before your eyes, becoming fairy dragons. Whoa, ouch. Wow, chain fucking lightning, you dicks. <laughs> of all the spells, man. Ouch. This is why I hate fighting fairy dragons, man. They're so, so strong with their spells. Oof. Well, we're going to lose, um, we're going to have to lose something. What we're going to lose is the, uh, Royal Griffs. Perhaps talking to Kerbin wasn't the wise move, considering how close he was to Velita. But he was the only other person I knew who didn't believe that Velita was the spy. Does anyone else use black and green fletching on their arrows? I asked the dwarf. No, he said. All the bowmen use green upon orders of the Elf King. Only commanders are allowed to use their own colours. Then Kerbin realised what colours I was asking about. This is about Velita, isn't it? What's wrong? he asked. Aspen thinks he's finally uncovered his spy, I said. I left knowing already that I had said too much. If Felita was the spy, she would soon find out that Aspen was close to proving it. But I didn't care. When I got back to my tent, however, I noticed the chessboard sitting on my strategy table. I had scheduled a game with Aspen, but I didn't feel much like playing anymore. Then I got to thinking about the strategies I'd been using, about the one Felita had been teaching me, and even about some of the ones I've learned from Aspen. And then I realised that I hadn't been considering all of the pieces in this spy game I have been dragged into. Interesting. Cool, 21. Gee. Good thing we got Resurrect, really. And the other good thing with uh, Fairy Dragons, they are weak as hell against, um, as like, actual fighting units. It's just their spells that are just crazy powerful. Oh, nice. Wonder how that... Oh, magic resistance, I see. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Okay, well, this should be easy as pie. Good old implosion. The treetop shufflers, a pack of sharpshooters, draw their bows. They are sworn to protect the forest of the fairy dragons, and unfortunately they decide to shoot before they ask questions. Well... Unfortunately, oh, that's not where I thought that would take me out. Interesting. Oh, right, so I need to use that. Right, I gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I don't actually know how many fairy dragons I need to collect. I'm going to hope and assume six, but it could be more like 12. Could even be 10, who knows? <laughs> Doesn't actually tell me. The trees part to reveal an open field in which flit thousands of monarch butterflies. You stop as the butterflies dance around excitedly, merging into a dark gold cloud that becomes a fairy dragon. Dun dun dun! Just the one, is it? Wow. Unfortunate for them. I was sitting alone in my tent when Velita appeared. You wanted to talk? She said. Yes, I said, holding up two sheets of parchment. Do you know what these are? Velita shook her head. One is a note detailing the strengths and weaknesses of my army. It's coded, unreadable, and according to Aspen, very difficult to break. And the other paper? Felita asked. A translation, completed this morning by Aspen, although no one knows yet that he has broken the code. I stood up and approached Felita, handing her the notes. She looked at them briefly, then back to me. Do you believe I am a spy? She asked softly. I could tell by her expression that she already knew suspicion had been cast her way, but I leaned forward and placed my lips on hers, finding them thin but extremely soft and warm. She didn't pull away as the part of me that didn't want to be hurt had hoped. Instead she kissed me back and placed a hand on my hip. She asked again, do you think I am the spy? No, I wouldn't kiss a spy, I said. I think I've been watching the Queen while my enemy sneaks his bishops in for checkmate. What? Felita asked. Well, I didn't want to explain right now. I kissed her again. Oh my god, it finally turned into a love story. Amazing. I mean, hell, Jimmy, it's about damn time. <laughs> it's 
This is such an interest. So who would the spy be if it's not if it's not Velita? Who else could be? I mean, it could be Aspen. Can you? He broke the code pretty quickly, right? What would his? What? Well, why? What would? Hmm. How would he gain from that though? Oh man, this is interesting. Kerbin? Kerbin said he trained Velita, right? A sudden cloudburst sends you and your troops running for cover. The rain comes down in a torrent and lightning strikes dangerously close. Normally you wouldn't stand beneath a tree during such a storm, but in this thick forest you don't have much choice. Then a huge purple bolt strikes an ancient oak, splitting it in a blast of fire and smoke. When you pick yourself up off the ground, you see eight fairy dragons springing forth from the broken tree. Woof. Eight. <laughs> Jeez Louise. I'll right back at you. Fireball. I mean, of all the spells, Fireball's probably the weakest one I could have had. Maybe Frost Ring, probably worse. That is the downside. It's so there is such a high amount of RNG involved with fairy dragons in terms of what spells you get. All right, so I'm going to assume twelve, so two rotations of all the buildings. Might as well see if we get any better spells. Implosion, we've already got that. Fire shield, eh? Aspen rode into camp with his hand held high. Another note. As I came up next to him, the elf said, Here's the proof you can't deny. I took the letter. It was in code, but Aspen had already made notes in the margin, so I read them quickly. This isn't from the spy, I said. No, it's to the spy, Aspen said with a big gloating grin. He looked directly at Velita, who was standing next to me. Many of the other soldiers were already gathering around us. You've translated it so quickly, I said. Yes, I know the code by heart, Aspen said. Mutari will have no more secrets. And who's the spy? It's... The arrow nicked my shoulder on its way into Aspen's chest. The elf's face suddenly went as white as snow. His knees buckled, but Velita caught him before he hit the ground. I turned, shouting orders for the assassin to be found. Then I looked back to Velita. There were tears on her cheeks. I can't believe it's really him, she said. You were right? Uh, am I miss, uh, missing something? Is it Kerbin? Can't be Aspen. He got shot. We were there. Felita was there, so it has to be Kerbin. Kerbin was the spy. Holy shit. I mean, that is... Wow. That's a turn up for the books. The dwarf man. Really? My master of supplies. What a dick. Damn, what a turn up for the books. So we're just um, sending uh, the lieutenants to pick up some spells from the dungeon base. And then we'll close this bad boy out. I approached the dirty soldier, knowing immediately that he had bad news. He got away, sir, the soldier shouted. Slipped into a tunnel when we lost him. Kerbin, I like that dwarf. A lot. But as Master of Supplies, he was privy to every move I made, as well as the movements of the Elf King's troops as well. Where the supplies went, so did the troops. Sometimes he knew more about what was going on before I did. And Kerbin was the one who gave Velita the black and green feathers for her arrows. He was also, I later learned, the one who taught her how to shoot, so he was an expert marksman capable of firing a message arrow into any branch he wished. Thanks to Velita, Kerbin learnt that what no one else in the camp knew, that Aspen had broken Mutari's code. In the elf's usual arrogance, he kept that secret to himself, so Kerbin had to kill Aspen before he fled camp in order to protect his master's secrets. And now Kerbin was gone, and Aspen was near death. I mean, credit where credit's due, this has been a really exciting and intriguing... Um, story that's developed, sort of like a... I guess you'd call it a side story, because it's not quite, you know, the main story, but it is very, very relevant. Oh, it's the griffins that are blocking me. Whale. 
Get rid of them. Right little bottleneck going on over here. All right, let's get these, uh, get some spells for Velita and Sorsha. Beautiful. Put them to good use. Chain lightning. Boom. <laughs> Man, what a different spells make. Alright, grab the next round of fairy drags. And then we're golden, I think. Right, I reckon we need 12, so uh, two rotations. It doesn't explicitly say that, it's just an assumption. Ha! There we go. Congratulations, you have over 12 fairy dragons in your armies. Your enemies have no choice but to bow down before your power. <laughs>